What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to solve, hopefully, any type of logarithmic equation, right? So I'm gonna start with a couple easier ones, and then I'm gonna get into a couple where we have multiple solutions and we have to check for extraneous solutions and even use the quadratic formula, all right? So let's start with this one right here. So we have log base two of five X minus 17 is equal to three. Now we're trying to solve for X, right? So the first thing we can do is get rid of this log base two. And the way that you do that is whatever little number you have here, the base, uh, so it's a two, right? So we're gonna write a big gigantic two right here. So we're saying two raised to the log base two of five X minus 17, right? But remember what we do to one side of an equation, we do to the other, right? So if we're gonna put a big ass two over here, we have to do the same thing over here. Okay, so then on this side, we basically have two raised to the third power. Now on this side, the big two over here and the log base two cancel each other out. And then whatever is left in these parentheses is what we're left with down here. So we're left with five X minus 17 is equal to the other side over here to cubed, which is equal to eight. Okay, and then we can just add 17 to both sides. Those cancel out. So we get 5x is equal to 25. So then here you can see that x is equal to positive 5. All right, so there's our answer here. All right, here's the next one. So we have the natural log this time of 4x minus 7 is equal to the natural log of x plus 5. So in this case, uh, we have an, a natural log, and the way that you get rid of those is by specifically writing a big E, all right? The special natural base number E, okay? And again, what we do to one side, we do to the other, right? Now this E and the natural log cancel out, and it's the same thing over here. And again, we're just left with whatever's in the parentheses. So on this side, we're just left with four X minus seven, and that's equal to X plus five, right? And then just solving for X over here, uh, we can subtract X from both sides. Here we can add seven to both sides. So here we get that three X is equal to positive 12, right? So then here we can see that X is equal to positive four. Oh, all right, here's the next one. And with this one, we're gonna have to start checking for extraneous solutions. So this is the, the log of two X plus the log of X minus five is equal to two. All right, so uh, one thing you might notice is that we're missing the little numbers next to the log, right, the little base. So whenever that number is missing, it's actually implied that there's a 10 right there. Okay, so these are basically just log base 10s. Okay, so since we have a log base 10 and a log base 10, and you can see that we're adding these two logs together, whenever you're adding two of the same logs together, you can squish these together by multiplying. So what we're gonna write instead is a log base 10. And then the two terms that we have here are two X and X minus five, right? So again, since we're adding, we're going to squish those together by multiplying them together, right? So this is called condensing a logarithm. So we're gonna squish them together as two X times X minus five and here, we'll change the color of the parentheses to make it a little bit more clear what's going on. So we're multiplying these two guys together and it's equal to two, all right? So then again, in order to get rid of a log, you just need to look at the little number over here. So it's a 10. So then we can write a couple big tens, right? So we'll say 10 raised to this whole thing is equal to 10 raised to this whole thing. So then on this side, the 10 and the log base 10 cancel out. And we're just left with whatever's in the parentheses. So here it's 2x times x minus 5. And that's equal to 10 squared, which is 100. Okay. The next thing we can do is just multiply these together to simplify it. So 2x times x is equal to 2x squared. And 2x minus 5, or times negative 5, is negative 10x, which is equal to 100. Now, we almost have this in a quadratic, right? So we can just move the 100 to the left side. So we can write this as 2x squared minus 10x minus 100 is equal to zero. Okay, and now I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so we have a little extra room here. Uh, now we can factor this quadratic, right? So we can first factor out two. So we'll say two, and then in the parentheses, we'll be left with x squared 
minus 5x minus 50 is equal to 0. Okay, now we can factor what's left in here. So again, we still have this 2 out here. And then if we factor this guy, we're going to be left with, let's see, x and x, and then two numbers that multiply to negative 50 but add up to negative 5 would be a positive 5 and a negative 10. Okay, so then scrolling down just a little bit more. Uh, here you can see we have two factors. So if you set each of those equal to 0, we'll get two answers. So we'll get that x is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to positive 10. All right, cool. So as you can see, we finally got our two answers right here. Now we need to check them and see if either one of them are extraneous. So in order to do that, we just need to plug them back into the original equation, right? Which was this guy up here at the top. So first let's check uh, x is equal to negative five. So let's plug in a negative five into this guy. So we'll get that the log of two x Right, so 2 times negative 5 uh, plus the log of x minus 5, so negative 5 minus 5 is equal to 2. Right, so then here we get the log of 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 plus the log of negative 5 minus 5 is negative 10 as well. Right, and that's equal to 2. Okay. Now, here we've run into a problem because you can't take the log of a negative number, okay? You can only take the log of a positive number, okay? It's like trying to take the square root of a negative number. You just can't do it, okay? So same thing over here. So since we got negative numbers in here for these logs, that means the x that we plugged in, negative 5, is no good. It's no bueno, all right? So that means this solution, x is equal to negative 5, is extraneous extraneous right so again that just means it's not really a solution so now we can check our second solution which was uh, x is equal to positive 10 right and see if that's uh, extraneous or not so if we plug in a 10 again up here we're gonna get log of 2x so 2 times 10 which is 20 plus the log of x minus 5 so 10 minus 5 which is positive 5 is equal to 2 Okay, remember these are both just logs, right? They both have basically the same little base number 10. And again, since we're adding them, you can squish them together by multiplying the two numbers right here. So 20 times five, right? So we're gonna rewrite this as log base 10 of 20 times five. And that's equal to two. So here we get log base 10 of 100 is equal to two, right? Is this a true statement? Well, yes it is, because the way that you solve logs is basically just taking the base, so 10, right? And then the number that it's equal to is your exponent, so 10 squared. And then you just set this equal to whatever number is right here, uh, the last number, which is 100, okay? Is 10 squared equal to 100? Yes, it is, right? So just rewriting it in exponential form probably helps a lot. So as you can see, x is equal to 10 right here, definitely is a solution. All right, let's try one more here. So we have the natural log of x plus the natural log of x plus three is equal to four. Okay, so in this case, we're working with natural logs, right? And you can see again that we're adding. So the first thing we can do again is just condense these two, right? Squish them together the same way we did with the last problem. So we're going to write it as the natural log of the two terms, right? x and x plus three. So we're gonna multiply x times x plus three. Okay, and again, that's equal to four. Now, in order to get rid of a, of a natural log, again, you can just write some big e's right there, right? So then uh, e raised to this whole thing is equal to e raised to the fourth. So then this guy and this guy cancel out, and we're just left with what's up here. So we get x times x plus three is equal to e to the fourth power, okay? Now on this side, again, we can multiply everything together. So just distribute, right? So we're gonna get that x squared plus three x is equal to e to the fourth. 
Now again, we can write this as a quadratic uh, by just moving the e to the fourth to the left side. So we'll get x squared plus 3x minus e to the fourth is equal to zero. Okay, now we need to factor this guy. And if you notice something, uh, e to the fourth, well just e in general, is an irrational number, right? So this would be very difficult to factor. Actually, we can't factor it. So in this case, we would need to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so if you remember, that's this guy right here. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right, that's how my teacher's saying it to me, so that's what I'm doing to you. So now that we wrote this guy out, let's identify A, B, and C over here. So again, this is A, this is B, and this is C. So for A, we basically have a 1. For B, we have a positive 3. And for C, we have negative E to the fourth. Okay, so then here, uh, this is going to be, I'll write it again, X is equal to negative B, so negative 3, plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4. And A was positive 1. And C was negative E to the fourth, right? negative e to the fourth and that's all over two times one which is just two okay so then here we get that x is equal to negative three plus or minus the square root of nine minus and then uh, four times one is just four right so then four e to the fourth and that's all over two okay and sorry i made a little mistake uh a negative times a negative is a positive, right? So then this should be nine plus four e to the fourth, okay? Now, if you plug this into your calculator, you'll get that this is equal to negative three plus or minus the square root of, and then this is equal to approximately, uh, we're gonna round to two decimal places, 227.39, and that's all over two. Okay, so then this is approximately equal to, uh, sorry, negative three plus or minus, and then uh, the square root of 227.39, this is approximately 15.08, and that's all over two. Okay, and I'm gonna scroll down again, just to give us some room. So then here you can see we wind up with two answers, right? Negative three plus 15.08 divided by two, and we get negative three minus 15.08 divided by two. Okay, so x is equal to both of these guys. So then if you plug, let's say this first one into your calculator, you'll get that x is approximately 6.04, and over here you'll get that x is approximately negative 9.04. Okay, cool, so here are our two answers. Now we need to just plug these back into the original equation and check if they're extraneous or not. And I'll just write the uh, equation down here. So the equation was pretty simple. The natural log of x plus the natural log of x plus three is equal to four. All right, so let's check this, uh, this one first, 6.04. So we'll get the natural log of 6.04 plus the natural log of uh, 6.04 plus 3 is equal to 9.04, right? So we'll get the natural log of 9.04 right here is equal to 4. Now, if you plug these into your calculator, you'll get that this is approximately equal to 4. Okay, so then here we get that 4 is equal to 4. Okay, so then that means this solution, x is equal to 6.04, is a solution, right? So now we just need to check this one, negative 9.04. So then here we'll get the natural log of negative 9.04 plus the natural log of negative 9.04 plus 3 would be equal to negative 6.04, and that's equal to 4, okay? So here we once again ran into a problem, right? Here we're trying to take the natural log of a negative number in both of these cases, right? So since we can't take the log of a negative number or the natural log of a negative number, that means this solution over here 
is not really a solution, right? So that means this guy is extraneous. Boom. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.